Good morning, and thank you for joining the Kensington Reston's Wellness Wednesday offering of Aromatherapy Essential Oils 101. We would like to welcome back our wellness instructor, Katie Corlander, who will be guiding you through today's class. I am Angela Bailey, Executive Director for the Kensington Reston in assisted living and memory care community coming to the Reston area in early 2021. We hope you enjoy today's class and that you will join us next Wednesday for guided meditation at 11 a.m. We understand that caregiving can be difficult and we want to support you on your journey. So we welcome you to take part in Wellness Wednesday and other upcoming events that support you finding calm, boosting happiness, and living your best life as a caregiver. Thank you again, and please enjoy Aromatherapy with Katie Corlander. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Aromatherapy. I'm so excited to go over Essential Oils 101 with you today. So I know that some of you are local and you may have received your little essential oil kit. <clears throat> Excuse me, fall allergies, everyone. <laughs> so um, if you do have this, then have it nearby. If you aren't local um, and you didn't get this kit, then I'll tell you, we're going to talk about five specific oils today. And those oils are lavender, frankincense, peppermint, orange and thieves. Now thieves is a blend that is specific to Young Living. That's where I get my oils, but I'm going to tell you all of the oils that are inside of it as well. So before we use those oils and start talking about those specifically, we are going to get real, really into the basics of essential oils with the first big question, which is what are essential oils, right? And so for everyone here, some of you may already use essential oils. You may have been using them for years and years, and some of you may be brand new. So I am going to go over some basics of what an oil is, where it comes from, how we get it, and how you can use it to support your health and your wellness. All right, so essential oils are part of a plant, right? They come from plants. They're actually the most powerful part of the plant. And we get those oils by distilling the plant. And when I talk about plants, we're talking about trees, bushes, shrubs, flowers, herbs, resins, roots, um, fruit, and peels. All right. So we can get, we can pull essential oils by distilling out of all of those different types of plants. And the oil itself is actually, um, it consists of hundreds and hundreds of organic compounds that can be really, really beneficial to a lot of different systems within your body. So we can use different essential oils to help support the endocrine system, the respiratory system, the, circular, uh, the circulatory system, the muscular system, the skeletal system. You can use oils to support your hormones. Um, oils can help support brain health. Right, so there are so many different uses for these oils. And in addition to that, in those um, more physical ways that we can use the oils, oils are really, really beneficial to your mental health and for emotional support. And so when we talk, talk about different ways to use them, there are three main ways that we use essential oils. And those ways are aromatically, and so that is diffusing oils or just smelling them. And so some ways that you can do that, if you have a diffuser at home, definitely use that thing. I know for a while I used to use essential oils and then I stopped for a long time. And then I started using them again and I had, I think, three diffusers that were kind of just tucked away in a closet somewhere. I pulled them out and I cleaned them and started using them. And immediately I was like, why, why have I not been using these? Right. So if you can see behind me over here to my left, this is a diffuser that you plug in and that has, it actually has um, a kid's scent right now. It's called Genius because this room is also where my first grader does his virtual learning. But um, in a diffuser, all you do is you add water and then you add a couple drops of an oil. So that could be one oil or you can get fancy and make a blend with two, three, four, five different oils and make your own recipe. 
And so that is um, one way that we get the oils into our system by diffusing. They also have diffusers that you don't plug in. So this is an example of a diffuser, cute little flower, it's made of clay, and you just drop oils. So again, one oil where you can make your little blend recipe. Drop a couple on here, and then the clay naturally diffuses that scent out. So I actually, a little story, just bought um, a bowl with some clay stones for my mom because where she works, she can't plug in a diffuser. So she sits that on her desk and is able to enjoy the smell um, of essential oils while she is at work. So another way that you can smell oils, probably obviously, is just smelling them, right? Um, and so having that scent in the room, and I'll show you, you can actually make what we call a scent tent, which I think is kind of silly, but you just drop a drop or two of oil onto your hands, you rub your hands together, and then you take your hands over your nose and you just inhale. And that's a really, really good way to just smell in that oil if you don't have a diffuser or if you want it to be a little bit stronger because smelling it right out of the bottle and if anyone here has bottles of essential oil this is lavender which is pretty tame so this actually smells good but there are some oils where you smell out of the bottle and you're like whoo that smells terrible <laughs> but then if you use just a drop or two it smells a lot better um, just because these are very very concentrated so that is how we can use them aromatically. Um, when you smell oils, studies have shown that it takes about three seconds for those oils to get into your heart, your liver, and your thyroid. So it's almost instantaneous, the um, getting that oil into your system to start supporting your health. That's the method that I use probably the most is aromatically. The next is topically. And so topically is taking the oil and putting it directly onto your body, onto your skin. Now you do want to be careful because there are some oils that are so concentrated that are very, very strong and are not safe to put directly on your skin. And if that is the case, as long as you're getting your oils from a reputable source that has good labeling and packaging, then the bottle of oil should tell you whether or not you need to dilute it or not. Um, a lot of citrus oils, so um, orange and lemon, citrus fresh is a blend that Young Living, Young Living has. These oils can sometimes make your skin very sensitive to light and sensitive to the sun. So I would not recommend putting those directly on your skin if you're about to spend a lot of time outside. <clears throat> but the beauty is that whether the oil is generally regarded as safe for topical use or not, you can dilute it. So if you are someone who has sensitive skin, then I would recommend diluting your oils. Um, and if you're not, just like with most products, right? Any product that you buy that you put on your skin, it usually says on the bottle to test a space on yourself before actually like rubbing it all over your face, right? So you can take, um, I usually would use my arm, like your forearm or the inside of your arm, especially because the inside of your arm, this skin is a little more sensitive. So if you take a drop of oil, put it on the inside of your arm and then wait 20 minutes, maybe an hour and see if you have a reaction. And if you do have a reaction, then you'll know okay, I really need to dilute this before I use it or it is safe. <clears throat> so personally, I find that my skin is not that sensitive. And so I can put these oils directly on my skin, but please do, you know, listen to your body and do what's right for you. So when you are using them topically, if you are diluting it, what does that mean? That means that you're going to use what we call a carrier oil. <clears throat> The carrier oil is something like coconut oil, almond oil, vegetable oil, anything like that, that you can take, usually it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you would have a, a drop of coconut oil and then a drop of your essential oil, rub it together in your hands, and then you can put it on the desired area. 
This also I will use sometimes not even for sensitivity, but just as a way to distribute the oil more quickly over a larger surface area. So if you have one drop of essential oil, you may be able to get it over part of your skin, but if you're using it with a carrier oil, then it's almost like a massage oil, right? You're able to really spread it over your, like all, all of your arms, your legs, wherever it is that you are putting it. So that depends on how you're planning to use your oils, and we'll get into that in just a few moments. So I will say also, if you are planning to use oils with children, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to dilute your oils because children's skin is so much more sensitive than ours. And like I mentioned, these oils, when they come in their pure state, are very, very concentrated. So if you are buying from a brand such as Young Living, I know that Young Living does have this, they offer oils that are developed specifically for children, like this genius that I mentioned before. It's a line called Kid Sense, and these bottles come pre-diluted. So what that means is it already has the carrier oil, carrier oil in it, so these are safe to put directly on your child's skin or to have your child smell it because it is very, very diluted already. Um, but if you are using, you know, if you might have read with lavender, um, it's a great oil for sleeping. And I know a lot of people will use this to help their children sleep. Aromatically, an undiluted bottle of lavender is fine because you're putting it in with water. But if you were going to, let's say, put some lavender on the bottom of your kid's feet, um, you might want to put it in with a little bit of carrier oil just to protect their skin. So the science of how that gets from your skin into your body. On average, it takes about 26 seconds for anything that touches your skin, any chemicals or oils that touch your skin to get into your bloodstream. So if you put some oil onto your skin, within 26 seconds, less than half of a minute, it's already in your bloodstream. And in a typical healthy adult body, it takes around six hours for these oils to be eliminated from your system. So you can use that kind of as a guideline. Now, the last way that we use oils to get into the body is internally, and that is by ingesting oils. Now, this is one that I personally don't use very often, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about ingesting oils. Um, I, I do have friends and know a lot of people that will put oils into veggie capsules and take that daily as part of their wellness routine. So if you do have questions about that, I have more information and I'd be happy to connect with you after this class to talk specifics. Um, but some more, I don't know, softer ways of ingesting the oils. You can take oils like lemon or peppermint or orange and add a drop to your water, right? We've all heard that drinking lemon water in the morning is really, really, really great for your digestion. And if you don't have a lemon, you can put a drop of pure lemon essential oil because that oil is being distilled directly from the rind of the lemon directly from the fruit. So it is safe to drink that. Now I would not recommend putting a whole bunch of drops of oil and just drinking oil. We don't want to do that, right? But one drop in water is perfectly fine. Uh, you can also cook with oils. So we have oils that are, you know, thyme, oregano, oils that come from herbs that you would be cooking with anyway. And so if you don't have that herb, you can use the oil to spice things up. I have even used, um, orange oil. This was just a few months ago. I was drinking a blue moon and I didn't have an orange. So I put a drop of orange essential oil in it. Worked like a charm. <laughs> so those are the three main ways that we get oils into our system. And if you have questions during this, you are welcome to use the, the chat feature to pop your questions in, and, and I'd be happy to, to answer those uh, to the best of my ability as we go on. If I don't have an answer for you right away, I am more than happy to do the research, get that answer, and get back to you. All right. Scrolling along in my notes here, folks. So I did mention that 
when you use oils topically, it takes about 26 seconds for that oil to get into your bloodstream. Now I want you to think about all of the products that you use in your life that you put directly onto your skin because it is the same principle there. It takes about 26 seconds for all of those, um, any product that you're putting on your face, on your skin, on your hair, for that to enter the bloodstream. And I have a statistic here, where did it go? Um, especially women, if there are women on this call, we put so, so, so many products onto our skin. Right? It's estimated that we use about 300 chemicals every day on our body through soaps, makeups, shampoos, and hair care products. And 80 of those products are estimated to be used before breakfast. So chemicals being all the different chemicals that are inside of your face wash, inside of your moisturizer, inside of your shampoos, inside of your lotions, your makeup, right? And so if you just take a moment and think about your morning routine and your, um, you know, your showering, your bathing routine, how many different products you have. And then if you were to later go look at your shampoo, go look at your moisturizer and just take a look at the list of ingredients and see how many different chemicals are in there. Not all of those chemicals are harsh. And we have a really, really wonderful time that we're living in that we are making a lot of progress with our um, self-care products that a lot of them are becoming more natural that because this science and research is available a lot of companies are working with integrity to use safe products and that is amazing and one thing that I like to do is um, I'll google ingredients. If I can't read something on a label, I don't know what it is. You just go into Google and look it up, see what it is. And you can actually find the toxicity of that chemical. So just something to be aware of. And that's not, when I first learned about this, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't care too much, or I'm just going to be scared <laughs> to put anything on my skin ever, right? And if you have kids, the same thing, right? What are you putting on your baby's skin? What are you putting on your kid's skin? So this is not at all to scare you, but just to bring awareness to the amount of chemicals that we're putting on our skin. And also on the flip side of that, the amount of chemicals that we're breathing in within our house. When you think of your household cleaners, because like I mentioned before, it takes three seconds when you breathe something in for it to get to your heart, your liver, and your thyroid. So if you are using um, cleaning products that have harsh chemicals in them, three seconds and you're breathing that in and it can be affecting your health. Can be, not always, right? So these are just great things to be aware of as you start to ditch and switch. And so ditch and switch is just an easy way to, once you're aware, okay, maybe these products I'm using have some harsh chemicals that I don't want in my body, I don't want on my skin, I don't want in my kids products, then you can just one at a time ditch that product and switch for something more natural that will support your health and your wellness along the way. All right, so let's get into these five oils. And we are starting with lavender. Lavender is the Swiss army knife of essential oils. Um, I'm guessing if you don't use essential oils, if you're new to this, you've probably heard of lavender. Maybe you've even smelled or used lavender oil. You probably have heard of some of the benefits of lavender oil because this is, I'm going to say this is probably the most popular essential oil um, on the market. And if you have your little bag of oils, it is purple for lavender. <laughs> So when we talk about lavender oil, the first things that come to mind are calming, soothing, helps with sleep, and these are all true. And one thing I'm going to say right away, um, a lot of these oils, when you look it up, if you were to Google, you know, the, the uses or the benefits of lavender oil, you're going to see a lot of different things. And sometimes these are even contradictory, like some of the oils that we may be talking about today, you'll be told, oh, it 
is calming and it's also energizing. Well, how can it be both, right? And that's because it's different for every person and it's different on how you use it. So one thing that I like to do, because there are so many oils, is just smell it right? And I don't need to be told necessarily how it's going to make me feel. If I smell lavender, and if you have lavender, go ahead and open it up. You can either smell it right out of the bottle or put a drop on your hand, make a scent tent, right? Or you can waft the, the scent up to your nose. Maybe close your eyes if you have this and just take a moment to breathe it in. And notice for yourself how you feel, right? Because all of our experiences are different and all of our feelings are valid. So this might bring back memories. Let's say your grandma wore lavender, right? And then that might make you feel happy and that's valid. It might make you feel calm. It might make you feel ready for sleep. It might remind you of yoga class, <laughs> Right, so these oils can trigger different feelings, different emotions within us. But lavender generally is seen as very, very soothing. It is not only soothing emotionally, but it is also soothing to the skin. So lavender can be great if you have um, sensitive skin, if you have redness in your skin, uh, even blemishes. A drop of lavender oil can help to soothe skin irritations. And aside from your face too, if you're out in the sun for a little too long and maybe you have a sunburn or just like a little, a little bit of, mm, I was out there too long, lavender can help to soothe that irritation. So it's soothing and calming both to the skin and to the mind, which is pretty cool. And there are lots of products on the market and you can DIY your own um, after sun sprays that use lavender, right? And so now we're kind of ending summer, but next summer, <laughs> or if you go on vacation at some point and you're out in the sun, having some lavender oil can be really, really helpful. And if you do have skin irritations on your face, then lavender is gentle enough that you can apply this directly to your skin. But again, test your arm. And if you have sensitive skin, then you can use this with a carrier oil. Um, and I would look up different carrier oils. I personally use coconut oil the most, but depending on if you have dry skin or oily skin, there are lots of different carrier oils and you can find which one works the best for you. So lavender, very soothing and calming and nourishing. When you smell lavender, it just eases the senses. And so if anyone here practices yoga, um, if your yoga teacher, or your yoga studio uses essential oils, they may use essential, um, lavender oil during Shavasana because it's very, very calming or during a restorative practice. And that's why you see so many products like lavender scented eye pillows and lavender scented this and that because lavender just makes us feel calm and at ease and peaceful. So let's say you had a stressful day. You can put a couple drops of lavender in a diffuser and breathe that in. You can make a scent tent and that will help bring feelings of calm. If you have trouble sleeping, lavender can help you fall asleep because of the calming properties. So again, in a diffuser, you could also apply lavender to the bottoms of your feet. And I talked about that earlier. That is for anyone out there with children and you're looking for like, how do I get this baby to sleep? Lavender on the feet is always a big, big suggestion. And you can do that for yourself as well. You can even sprinkle a drop or two of lavender on your pillow right? You can put it on your sheets. You can make a sheet spray with a little glass bottle with water and lavender. And I would add a, a dash of witch hazel or a dash of vodka in with that because it helps the oil and the water to mix a little bit better. But you want to shake it up. Then you can spray your sheets, you can spray your closet, you can spray your carpet, you can do anything, make everything smell like lavender and you'll just be very calm all the time. <laughs> So that is 
my favorite way to use lavender. Lavender can also be ingested. Um, you, know, you can add lavender to lemonade, things like that. And again, it just makes that calming and refreshing, uh, refreshing scent and refreshing taste. So that is lavender in a nutshell. And we are going to move on to our next oil, which is frankincense. And if you are following along with your samples, frankincense is yellow. So it'll have the yellow top. And so if you have frankincense, this is like liquid gold. <laughs> and frankincense usually is a little more expensive. Um, and the price of oils, actually, before we get into frankincense, let me backtrack and talk about this. Because if you use essential oils or if you've looked at essential oils before, you might sometimes get sticker shock, I do, with some oils. Like, why in the world is this so expensive? Um, this tiny little bottle of oil is like, I can't actually remember how much frankincense costs, but it's definitely over $50 a bottle. Sometimes you're getting up closer to 100. And there are some bottles of oil, rose oil, that can sell for over $100 for a bottle which seems crazy a little bit to spend so much money on a bottle of plant juice. But the reason is because of the distilling process. So some of these oils are more difficult to get, right? And if you are using integrity, if your company is using integrity in their distilling process, then it may cost even more, but that means that you're getting a higher quality oil. Some of these oils, some of the plants have to be distilled in exactly the right temperature, in exactly the right sunlight. Like some of them have to be distilled in moonlight or there's only you know a, a few day window in which is optimal, um, the optimal time to distill in order to get the best quality oil that you can get. When we talk about rose oil, it's something like, oh my goodness, do I have this in front of me? Several hundred, um, oh, where is that? I don't have it right in front of me, but it's, it's, it's a few hundred pounds of rose petals to make one little bottle of rose oil. And so that's why that cost goes up. And sure, you can find lower cost oils um, in grocery stores or online, but I do just want to recommend that if you are shopping in a grocery store or on Amazon or wherever for your essential oils, to do a little bit of research on the company and their distilling process. And you just want to make sure that you are getting really high quality oils because unfortunately, there are some companies out there that try to cut costs and it is semi-common for you to buy a bottle of oil somewhere, you know, maybe a brand that you haven't heard of before. Let's say you're in Whole Foods and hey, this bottle of oil is $10. That's great. But that bottle of oil may be pre-diluted and it says 100% pure because that's not regulated by the FDA. So it may say 100% pure, but it could be cut already with coconut oil and you don't know. Or there's also some companies that may add synthetic um, perfumes to their oils to make it smell better, right? Because we all know what the synthetic smell of lavender, let's say, smells like. And then when you get a bottle of pure oil from the actual flower, it smells a little bit different. So some companies will add scent and that synthetic, it's, it's not real, which means that it's not good for you. So just do a little bit of research, um, whether you use Young Living or you use a different company, just make sure that you are buying pure oils because those are what are going to support your health the most. All right, off my soapbox. <laughs> Let's talk about frankincense. All right, so frankincense is like liquid gold. Um, Frankincense comes from a tree and it is really, really useful um, in spiritual practices. 
And so we all know kind of the historical story of frankincense, right? But it really is if you have it in front of you and you want to open it up and make a scent tent or smell, waft the smell up to you, right away, how do you feel? How would you describe this scent? And if you don't have it in front of you, it's very, very grounding. It's very earthy. And so this has been used for thousands of years in spiritual practices, in prayer, in meditation, because of its grounding effect. So if you are somebody that does pray or does meditate, you know, in let's say in the morning, then diffusing some frankincense or even just putting a drop on your hand and, and smelling um, can be a really, really powerful addition to your practice. Frankincense also is another kind of powerhouse in calming because of its grounding scent and its earthy scent. Frankincense and lavender are often paired together. And I actually do this for my kids. A lot of times I diffuse lavender and frankincense together at night for this really nice, calming, safe uh, environment for sleep. Because a lot of times, and we do this in yoga too, when we're talking about grounding poses, we feel safe, right? When you are on the ground, feet on the ground, hands on the ground, right? You feel safer because you feel more secure. And that is kind of what frankincense can also do for you. Frankincense is another one like lavender that is very, very helpful with the skin. I think that frankincense is kind of the, the, the gold <laughs> standard when it comes to oils for your skin. So when you add frankincense to your moisturizer, let's say, it can help your skin radiate. You get this, this glowing look about you when you use it consistently. Um, frankincense can also help to soothe skin irritations. It can help with blemishes. I made a, um, a DIY kind of facial scrub um, that is, and I can, if you're interested, we can connect afterwards. I can give you recipes for some of these DIY things, but um, it was coconut oil. So the, the solid coconut oil, a little bit of baking soda, frankincense and lavender. I think that's all that was in it. There might've been a little bit of tea tree oil as well, but so the baking soda makes it into an exfoliant, but the frankincense and the lavender really, really help to soothe skin irritations and help your skin to glow. So that's what I like to use frankincense for the most for meditation, for sleep, and for skin. All right. Moving right along to peppermint. So peppermint, and I chose very common oils, very popular oils, ones that you would be able to easily find, um, and ones that you've probably heard of before. So Peppermint, we all know what peppermint smells like, right? But if you have it in front of you, and peppermint, if you have your samples, is the blue circle. So this is going to be the little sample with the blue top. <clears throat> you can go ahead and open that up. Again, sniff it. This is very strong. <laughs> so I would recommend either putting a drop on your skin or um, wafting it up to you because peppermint out of the bottle, whoo. It's a lot to handle sometimes. <laughs> um, and I, for one, growing up, I was not a fan of mint. All right, like any kind of mint scent. I remember my grandma used to have peppermints all the time that she would, um, she had like peppermint candies that she would suck on when she was coughing. And I was always like, ugh, I hate the smell of peppermint. Like I didn't like peppermint gum, nothing like that. Now I'm older and wiser, <laughs> and I enjoy the minty, the minty, refreshing scent of peppermint. But right away when you smell it, what do you notice? For me, having some allergy and congestion issues, right away, I'm like, whoo, I can breathe. <laughs> Those nasal passages just cleared right up, and that is a really, really wonderful and common trait of the mint oils, um, peppermint, wintergreen, spearmint, 
um, eucalyptus. Uh, there are lots of, of these types of oils that just open up your respiratory tract. So if you are experiencing congestion, fall allergies, um, and this, by the way, what I'm saying is not to replace a medical professional, right? And if you take medication, keep taking your medication. But you can use this as um, a supplement. You can use this in addition. Um, so smelling this can open you up and make it a little bit easier to breathe, which breathing is a wonderful thing, right? <clears throat> so another thing that peppermint does is it inspires focus and clarity, mental clarity. I really, really like to use peppermint in a diffuser when I'm working or when I'm having a hard time focusing um, because peppermint, it awakens your senses, right? Like immediately you smell peppermint and you're like, whew, all right, <laughs> I'm not falling asleep, right? So when you feel that kind of afternoon foggy feeling, um, peppermint can be a really great pick me up. Um, when you're driving, I know people who, when they go on long drives, they have peppermint because they might just need to smell it. Or you could have a diffuser in your car, right? You could have something hanging from your mirror with a little like uh, lava stone and you could put an oil on that. They also sell jewelry, of course, um, necklaces. You can have a, a bracelet with a little lava stone or a piece of clay and you can put your oil on that. So you smell it all day. Peppermint can be really great to just keep your senses right there. Um, peppermint also is good for digestion. So this can be used topically, aromatically, or internally really for your digestion. Um, so if you are one that experiences gut issues or um, constipation, really either end of the digestive tract, constipation or, or diarrhea, um, having peppermint oil nearby can be helpful. Smelling it, you can put a drop and rub it on your stomach. Um, and you can also put a drop into your drink, into your water. So you could, if you're having a meal after you eat, actually before you eat a meal, and you might have read about this before, but put a drop of peppermint oil in your water, drink that, and then sit down and have your meal and just notice become aware, you know, did that help you digest a little bit better? I will use peppermint also for bloating. <laughs> um, I actually have a before and after picture where I was really, really bloated this one day. And so I took some coconut oil and some peppermint oil. I diluted it and I just rubbed it on my stomach. And within 20 minutes, I mean, like the bloating went away, which sounds like crazy snake oil business here, but I'm serious. It worked. Um, <laughs> I really like, Siri just started talking to me for no reason. <laughs> um, I also like to use peppermint with our next oil, which is orange. Um, so if you want to grab your orange oil, this is the orange top. <laughs> um, very fitting. Peppermint and orange together is pardon my French, but we call this the get shit done blend. <laughs> so if you're diffusing peppermint in oil, because peppermint gets you to focus and oil, the number one prop, I mean oil, orange oil, the property here is mood boosting, uplifting, right? Joyful. So if you open up your orange, oh my gosh, this peppermint has really got me breathing. <laughs> And this is one that you can stick that puppy right up in front of your nose and breathe it in. And I just can't get enough. It smells like orange, right? I mean, it comes directly from the fruit. It comes from an orange peel. So orange, just like the color is very vibrant. It's uplifting. It's joyful. So when you need a pick me up, if you need a mood boost, smell some orange. You can also, I mentioned this before, you can put a drop of orange in your cooking, in your drinks for a little citrus boost um, <clears throat> for vitamin C. Orange, um, also I, I have a, a friend who will put a drop of orange in like her brownies, <laughs> in her brownie batter and make a little, a little orange, um, orange flavor. 
So when you're using essential oil, some other ways that you can use this, and you're noticing a theme here, orange can be used for the skin as well. Orange can be used to reduce the appearance of blemishes. Um, just like you may have heard of actually using orange peels on your skin, it's, it's the oil. You can use that right on your skin. Um, you can diffuse this again for a, a boost in mood. Um, you can put some in your bubble bath. Oh, that's another thing I like to do with lavender. Sorry, going back to lavender. If you're looking for like a calming self-care experience and you put a drop or two of lavender in your bath, um, and if you want to be invigorated, orange or orange and peppermint together. If you have kids um, or grandkids and you are making Play-Doh or even you buy Play-Doh, right? You can add a drop of orange to the Play-Doh. And then while the kids are playing, they're breathing in this, ooh, this really nice, uplifting, mood boosting oil that can help maybe prevent some tantrums, right? <laughs> Um, the one thing I will say about orange oil, like I mentioned before, it is a citrus oil. So if you put this directly on your skin, avoid a lot of sun exposure. Um, but so that is orange. And then the final oil that we are going to talk about today is thieves. And thieves is a blend that you can find at Young Living. And what is included in thieves? It is, let me make sure I get them all, clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. So if you know any of those scents right away, it's like very spicy. Um, I think that this smells like Christmas <laughs> in, in a bottle. Um, I've heard cookies, but um, if you do have your little sample packet. Then this is the final one. It's like red slash brown color wise on your chart. Um, but the, uh, the actual bottle has a red sticker on the top. And so that is thieves. So if you want to open that up, take a whiff. <laughs> and I'll be honest, when I first smelled thieves oil, I was not really a fan just because Personally, my taste is that I don't love really spicy scents. Like I'm not a huge fan of, of the cinnamon smell or the clove smell. Um, but after I started using it, it took maybe like two days and now I'm obsessed with it. Um, so Thieves is really, really, really great to use as an immune boosting oil. It can help support your immune system. And how it does that, there are a lot of ways to use thieves internally. Um, there's a recipe for thieves tea, which is just a really warm, um, I don't know, soothing tea. And if you're feeling like you're getting sick, especially with respiratory system um, issues, uh, cold, things like that, if you take some thieves, put it in some tea and um, take a drink, it can actually help you. It can sometimes prevent you from that cold from actually uh, like manifesting. Um, and this does have my, uh, antimicrobial properties. Um, it is studied to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria as well. So Young Living does have a whole thieves line that includes hand sanitizers, it includes household cleaners, and things like that, because it's really, really useful. I use the household cleaner. Um, it comes in a bottle and you just take a capful and mix it with water and you can make all purpose cleaner, carpet cleaner, um, degreasers, right? You can make all kinds of things out of this. And then everything you're cleaning with has this Christmassy smell, <laughs> which I just think is lovely. Um, but I actually have been, I was, I was skeptical at first about, okay, is this actually going to clean as well as, you know, people say, um, I have a puppy, he's four months old and you know what puppies do, right? So I have a carpet cleaner and my carpet looks really clean and it smells good. Um, plus it's safe. So if he were then to go lick it or I have kids in the house, and that's something that I like to think about when I'm using chemicals or when I'm not using chemicals, as it were, um, 
is what's going to be safe for the other um, people and animals in my house. But some other ways that you can use thieves oil specifically, um, you can add it to things like applesauce, apple cider, and make it a little bit spicier. Um, I have a good friend who she says as soon as she feels like a tickle coming on in her throat, she'll take a drop of this and either put it in water or her husband says he just goes like that. <laughs> it was in the back of his throat. I wouldn't recommend that. I would say put it in the water um, or put it in a veggie capsule but they swear by that. Um, just diffusing thieves though and having that in the air can help to support a healthy immune system and a healthy respiratory system. Uh, it also just smells nice as an air freshener, right? So if you use air fresheners, you can ditch that and use thieves, which will uh, smell nice and support your immune system. But Air fresheners and candles, those are really good, easy things to ditch um, to get rid of those chemicals and instead just infuse really lovely smelling oils. So any of these ones that we talked about today or so many other oils, right? You pick your scent and you can make, like if you have a favorite candle, you can go into Pinterest <laughs> and find what oils can I blend together to make that scent. Um, one more thing that you can do, this is both good for lavender, I mean not lavender, peppermint and thieves is to make a breath spray. <laughs> um, either a spray or just a drop. I know people that will take peppermint, take a drop of peppermint and just touch it to the top of your mouth or put it right on your tongue and it'll freshen up your breath, you know, when you're in a pinch. Um, one more thing that I like to use both peppermint and lavender for are headaches. Um, I'm not saying that this will cure anything, but I do personally have headaches and migraines. Um, and so I have a couple different blends when I feel like a light headache coming on, I'll take peppermint and I know it's, it works on my skin undiluted, um, but you can also dilute it and I'll take peppermint or, and or lavender and put it on my temples behind my ears and on the back of my neck, and that will give relief, especially if it's a tension headache. Um, so there are lots and lots and lots of different ways to use essential oils. This kind of intro class was just scratching the surface. Um, if you do have questions, I love to talk about essential oils. So you can reach out to me and get my contact information from the Kensington, but I'll also tell you I do have a website, and it's like you see on your screen right now, katiecorlanderyoga.com. Um, so just my first last name, yoga.com. And I have information on there about essential oils. My email's on there too, so you can always reach out. And I would be happy to and help you uh, discover what oils can help support your health and wellness. Katie, we have a couple of questions that came through. Uh, okay as well. So, and thank you so much for going through all those oils. That is um, very helpful. Yeah. So the first question that we have is just, it's about CBD oils. Um, what are your thoughts on CBD oils and are there any negative side effects to using oils if you have a family history of cancer? Okay. Those are really good questions. Let me touch on CBD first. Um, I Personally, have not used CBD oil. Um, I I have used it topically, um, so I can't give you personal anecdotes. Um, but what I can tell you is, so first of all, I have it's downstairs, of course. But I have a a little tub of um, CBD muscle rub um, that I just started using, and I love. <laughs> um, and so there are some things to watch out for when you're using CBD oil, whether you are using the oil that you're going to ingest or on your skin, is to make sure, again, like I've been saying, that you're getting it from a reputable source. So any company that sells CBD oil, they should have a, um, a lab analysis certificate on their website or they should be mailing it with the, the actual oil. Because unfortunately, there are some um, some people who prey on people who want, prey on us who, who want to live a healthy lifestyle. And some of those oils may not be 
what they're claiming that they are, right? And when we talk about the THC levels in CBD oil, um, good CBD oil should not have very much THC or none in it at all. Um, so that if you were using CBD oil and had to get drug tested, if you are using good CBD oil, that should not show up on a drug test. Um, so the, the legal limit for CBD oil is um, uh, 0.3%, 0.3% THC. Um, and there are lots of companies that sell CBD oil that have 0.0% THC. And I know Young Living, um, their CBD oils are that. There is 0.0% THC. And so you can um, Google this too, because my information is limited. I'm telling you what I know, um, is that CBD is actually um, a different plant, right? So it's not, it's not a marijuana plant, <laughs> but sometimes it does have a little bit of THC with it. So you just want to make sure that you're, that you're, getting what you pay for and that you're getting what the label says. So that um, certificate of the lab analysis and any company that's selling CBD oil should be um, having their product tested in a third party lab. And then that third party lab is the one that supplies the certificate. And if there's a company that's not doing that, I would recommend not purchasing their CBD oil. Um, I do have a, uh, a friend who uses the Young Living CBD oil and she swears by it. She says that um, she's calmer, that she's able to sleep better. Um, I know people that use CBD oil and arthritis pain like disappears. Um, so there are a lot of really great testimonials out there. I don't have a personal story to share with you, but I'd be happy to do more research if you wanna chat later on that. And then the other question, cancer. Yes, using oils if you have a family history of cancer. To my knowledge, it is fine. Um, I would, if that is something that's of concern to you, my first recommendation always is to check with your medical professional, check with your doctor. Um, ask your doctor if using oils would be beneficial for you. Um, especially if you're thinking of ingesting oils and I'm kind of like shaky on ingesting them um, in general. I, I think medical professionals should always have the, the highest uh, opinion there. But um, as far as I know, it is safe to use essential oils if you do have um, family medical history of, of cancer or, or other diseases. Thank you, Katie. Um, and we have another question on where to get sample oils um, of the ones that you were discussing today. So I will just go ahead and say that if anybody is within 10 miles of the Reston area, um, you can email Alex and I will put all of this in the chat box, but you can email Alex and we are happy to provide you with samples of the oils that Katie went over today. Um, if you are not local to the area, then Katie, I'll let you take it away on where, um, you know, some other resources that we can, we can give. Yeah. Um, so if you are not local and unable to get those, those samples that the Kensington's providing, then getting samples of oil, though, so the oils that I, I did provide are Young Living oils. Um, and if, if you were again to go to my website, I even have a link to their website. <laughs> um, I believe that they do sell some samples so that you could purchase um, small samples or you could also purchase full bottles from, from them. I don't know of many places that sell samples specifically. Um, Young Living, like I said, they do sell a few, but it's limited in which oils. I'm not sure if they actually sell all of the samples that I provided for this class, um, but I'd be happy to look into that if that's something you're interested in. 